Hey, how's it going, everyone? It's Phil here. Um, I had just started um, working with this Profit Trailer bot recently, and uh, it's, uh, it looks like a bot that uh, trades crypto for you, and um, you know, just makes money for you automatically. You know, um, I always like had interest in uh, building one of these myself, and uh, you know, I bought it because it, it only costs now with like. Um, with Bitcoin going down, I, I think it costs uh, 0 0.03 Bitcoins, so that's about like 200 or so, maybe 200 and some change dollars, uh, if you're talking about USD. Uh, so I figured, uh, let me just, it's not a big investment, let me just buy it, see what it does, you know what I mean, so I could at least like work on some ideas if I eventually want to make my own bot. Anyways, uh, so I bought it, I set it up a couple of days ago, I've been running it for, for the past two days, um, I have a little small computer it's like a little bigger than a raspberry pi it's got an ssd uh hard drive in there you know a lot of ram uh and plus i have really fast internet at home you could run this program on your pc you could run it on windows on linux uh, i'm not sure if you could run it on mac um never really dealt with mac so i don't really look at that stuff also what people suggest you do if you can't like if you don't have a 24-hour uh option to run it you could run it on a virtual pri uh, vps a virtual private server which is basically like uh you have you rent out like windows on someone else's server you know what i mean they usually give you like quick um you know quick internet quick uh hard drives and everything's nice and fast and and always connected you know what i mean the downside to that is you have to pay monthly um so yeah, I don't know if if that that'll eat into your you know the profit you make uh, with this program. But anyway, so let's get to 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 the program. Profit Trailer. Um, this is what it looks like when it's running. This is a a win uh, the browser window, and you can see here um it's you have the possible buy log here that you just have settings that you know whatever indicate. You have pr current prices up here. You have um, you have a nice monitoring thing here uh, where it gives you tiles of like the market and also your performance. I have I don't really check that. I haven't like gotten used to that yet, so I just go. Uh, I just been feeling the program out recently. So uh, if we look here, this is the possible buy log. This has all the the coins that it could possibly buy if there's a, if the buy trigger gets set off. Um, I'll go into what would buy uh, what the buy triggers uh, are in a second, but basically you could, you have all the coins here. You could um, sort by how much the coin gained over 24 hours. So like this coin uh, engine gained 14% over 24 hours. Um, and you have the different strat that you could use here, what the current price is, the volume and BTC for the coins. Here you have what its current value is and what the trigger would be to to trigger a, a buy for that coin or whatever. So you see uh, like something like Nano is at minus uh, 0.26 and the buy trigger would be 0.95. And I'll explain to you how it triggers a buy and all that. Uh, and as you see, it just updates uh, in real time. Um, pretty pretty quickly i'm pretty happy with that these are in pairs like this is a coin that I bought for me earlier uh it bought uh, uh i don't even know how to say this one zil ziliqua or whatever it's called it's currently at a half a percent profit but i have a sell trigger on it for 1.25 percent so i'm waiting for it bots waiting till it reaches 1.25 and then it will start selling this is the dca log uh dollar cost averaging um uh, i'll explain this one this one's a pretty pretty hefty portion uh, of the bot this is like if you understand um what the bot does with dca with dollar cost averaging it, it'll uh, save your neck and um you, you don't want to jump into the bot without knowing about the dca because it could uh it could really cost you a pretty penny if you set that up incorrectly uh, let's see, these are my past sales. So I've been running this program for about a day and a half now, almost two days. I've had, uh, um, let's see, seven sales, so that means seven buys, but I also have had three other buys. Uh, so ten buys and seven sales. Uh, you can see uh, all the sales that I've made. Um, 
the profit on this one's uh you know our the most profits are are one point um some one point something percent uh what happens is um the triggers i think uh i forget i, I will check in a second we'll look at the exact settings but i think the trigger is like uh 1.25 um so oh you know it's not that much like you see like i got a profit of 10 11 cents here 9 10 11 you know it's it's less than a dollar profit in in two days um so i mean you won't get like uh you won't make uh you won't become rich overnight but the thing about this program is that it prevents you from losing uh too much here you could like configure the program um all the settings and everything you can figure the settings uh all while uh you know the program is running and the cool thing about this uh this monitoring thing right here like uh this monitor web page is that here's the the program uh the command uh, window that program is running and stuff the cool thing about this monitoring page is that you could set it up so you could just monitor monitor uh have the same exact web page like you could load it up on your phone or you could load it up on anyone's computer like outside of like your own computer or your own home network you know what i mean so you can monitor your bot like you could be running non-stop you just monitor it from wherever you can make uh changes uh to settings while it's running um it's it's pretty cool uh let me let's go over uh let me let me stop the program we go over some of the settings so we know what's going on so you'll see um we'll get paused here close that out close this out so basically when you get the program you get um you get in a little folder you click this uh button to to run it let's look at the the pairs window this is where like this is the heaviest settings uh the most settings uh in the program that you could adjust so you start off with like um, what market you want to do, BTC market, you could do ETH market, you could do USDT market. You could also, uh, this is uh, on Binance, but they have bots for Poloniex or um, Bitrix as well. I like Binance the most because they have the most volume. Uh, all trading enabled, when this is true, it's going to start trading. So if you want to just test some things out, maybe uh, you could leave this as false. All enabled pairs. You could either have this value as true to to trade all pairs that are on Binance, but uh, there's some shit coins on there I don't want my bot to trade in. So I had you could also make like a whitelist here. So let's go on. This is a uh, max cost. This is the most you will spend on one trade. So like I mentioned, uh, 0 0.01 is the minimum order for Binance. But the to be safe, you could do. I would suggest doing. 0 0.012 because uh, let's say your bot the, the least like if your bot is in a coin that could only you could only buy like whole numbers of that coin and it ends up being your bot wants to buy like uh, you know 100 coins of that coin but it ends up being like worth that much the, the trade won't go through because it needs to hit 0 0.01 minimum so if you do 0 0.012 you'll hit that minimum uh you you know what i mean you and it doesn't seem like much i think it's like eight or ten bucks uh this amount of btc but when we get to when i explain the dca uh you'll see how like how exponential this point one point zero zero one two could uh grow to uh and why it could be an issue if you start like trading like thirty dollars or fifty dollars uh from the get-go uh, you could have like, so if I had the bot running, um, like, so it trades any coin on Binance, all, you know, all the coins are a possibility. You could have it set up. So like the minimum volume, it, the bot looks at is like 300, like the coin has to have 300, uh, Bitcoins of 24 hour volume in order for the bot to look at it. And that's good because like you could get stuck with some coins that, um, 
are like you know really low volume and they're easily uh, manipulated for like pump and dumps and stuff like that and and the other thing is too like you want high volume coins because let's say you do buy uh your bot does buy a coin you want to eventually find a sell like a buyer you know when you when you're looking to sell it and if there's like low volume it's going to take you a while to find that buyer you don't want to be stuck holding like some you know crappy coin uh forever you don't want to be stuck holding it forever uh, you know, you want to be flipping uh, quickly, uh, and, you know, ideally. Uh, almond buy price, this is good to, like, if you want to set it up uh, to something like this, um, so that, like, every coin, so that the bot only looks at coins that are, like, at least 500 or 5,000 uh, Satoshis in value to prevent like you know buying like stuff like tron that's like only like three cents and it'll take you a while to for it to like rise up to um like a worthwhile value or, or like stuff like usually those small coins um that are cheap in value are, are easy pump and dumps they're like you know like like people say you know avoid penny stocks and stuff so you could avoid penny cryptos here since I have the whitelist over here, I don't need to like set up these uh, parameters here. I don't need like min or or, or whatever because I, the bot only looks at these coins. Um, anyways, all max buy spread. This one I'm not too exactly sure about like why you would need it. Uh, from reading the wiki, what they say is like two is the default, I think. Um, one is a more conservative approach and three is like a very uh, aggressive approach what it does um i'm not too sure what the purpose is but what it does is let's say they the like you know the buy book and the, and the sell book the order book or whatever uh the spread between those two that's what this is referring to so let's say this so this is a one percent spread uh the bot won't look at you won't uh, like put a buy order or a sell order in there if the spread is larger than one percent. You know what I mean uh, between the buy and, and the sell order books. Um, the reason uh, the wiki says for this is to prevent like getting stuck with uh, some unsellable positions. Uh, for the most part, that's due to um, like pump and dumps and stuff. So like. Uh, if the whole sell order book was just bought up or whatever or or whatnot you know what i mean or the whole buy order book was uh so someone sold uh through the whole buy order book uh you don't your bot won't put in like a, a position that's like one one and a half percent you know um below current market value uh you know I, i'm not really sure to be honest but Let's just say one is a, a nice conservative number, so you don't get stuck with too many um, bad positions. This one I'm not too sure about. Like I said, I have no trading experience whatsoever when I started running this. I used uh, these settings. Let me uh, give you a primer. Uh, I used these settings called Crypto Gnomes uh, Settings. Uh, he has a GitHub over here. You can look at his profit trailer settings, download these settings. Uh, he has settings for, for BTC, for ETH, for USDT. Is a setup guide and everything. He teaches you how to set up profit trailer and everything. Anyway, so I just copy and pasted his settings. Uh, I changed them a little bit, but not much at all. Uh, here you have, let me just uh, finish explaining pairs. There's not much more. Um, so this all by available volume trigger. This is this basically means uh, the bot will place a buy order if there is like let's say for your bot to place a buy order that costs this much BTC 0 0.0012. This uh, setting will look to see that there is at least 115% available of a uh, you know amount to fulfill your your buy order. If there isn't, it won't place a buy order in because uh, you don't want to do partial um, buys or whatever, uh, incremental or, or whatever. You want to do it like a, just a full quick buy. I'm not sure why, to be honest. I've been like considering like making this lower because like what's what's wrong with the partial buy? You know what I mean? Uh, I don't really know, but I think it has to do because uh, you don't want a partial buy with this amount because uh, 
you'll be left with dust and uh, you can't move that dust. So let's say like you only buy half of this amount. You can't sell it now because it's only 0 0.06 and that doesn't meet the minimum uh, order uh, volume. So, um, so I think that's uh, the reason why they have this. All max trading pairs. This means uh, you'll be only you'll be holding only five pairs um, at a time. You could make this. Uh, this is like a a more conservative number is maybe like two or three. I have it at five just because I want to get my feet wet. I just started, so I don't mind holding a few bags just to get started and stuff. There's a few different strategies you could uh, use with this bot down here. Uh, it starts you the the settings I use uh, are EMA gain. Uh, they also have like a uh, low uh, BB, which is uh, the low end of the Bollinger band. Uh, there's also EMA spread, uh, which is the spread between the EMA, the two EMA lines. Uh, to explain EMA gain, uh, EMA, let's see. Actually, uh, the Profit Trailer team uh, had a good video uh, about this. Let's see if, if we could find it on YouTube. There we go. So this is pretty good. So basically, EMA is exponential moving average. Um, in this in the profit trailer, you could set up two EMA lines. Uh, the first EMA line, you see this um, pinkish uh, line. It's basically a moving average is an average of the past. Like let's say you could set it up. Let's say to the past. I have it set up to thirty four. 34 candles or whatever so it'll be the past 34 candles um and uh, the thing about simple moving average and the difference between simple moving average and exponential moving average is that exponential has more weight applied to the most recent movements uh so like if it really takes a sharp dive uh in the most recent candle the ema will go down more uh Whereas a simple moving average, there's no weighting. Uh, it's not weighted at all. Uh, it, so if you have 34 candles, each one will be evenly uh, distributed. Anyway, since these two lines are both EMA, the first line, let's say you'll have, uh, I have it going far back as 34 candles. And then you have a second EMA that's a little more like short term uh, to see what the current uh, price movement is. So that one I think I have at either 7 or 13 candles. So that one will be a little more sharper and, and more um, in line with like the current trend or whatnot. So what EMA gain does is um, it looks at the difference between the second line and the first line. If the second line is, uh, let me see what my settings are. If the second line is minus 1% or, you know, minus 95% uh, of 1%, 0.95. If, it, if the second line goes, let's just say minus 1%, but, you know, my, my settings are at 0.95. If it goes 1% below the first EMA line, then uh, the buy, the profit trailer program um, gets triggered. Uh, it starts thinking like, yeah, you know, this is, this could be, uh, this is, uh, in the ballpark of what, you know, I want to buy it at, you know what I mean? This is, uh, the, this is the, I'm going to put a buy order in, uh, so that's EMA gain. That's, uh, that strategy. Uh, there's also another strategy called EMA spread. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure about, uh, EMA spread, what the difference is between that and EMA gain. Bollinger bands. I'm not sure what they are or whatever, but uh, Bollinger bands. Um, let me see. There's another video on about this one. Oh, so here you go. He has a good um, visual uh, representation of Bollinger bands. So let's say this white line is just like the moving average. Um, Bollinger bands are like, I have no idea what they are to be honest, but just imagine this little cloud below and above the the moving average. Um, low BB 
buying strategy would wait till like let's say you have low BB set at at um if you're doing the low BB strategy, which you see here, the low BB strategy, you see this one set at minus twenty. So basically minus twenty would mean that the bot would buy any time the price goes to minus 20% on the low BB strategy. So on the low BB strategy, this bottom line, this bottom Bollinger Band is, is the zero. So the bot would buy any time the price goes minus uh, 20%. So that would be 20% below the zero line. So that would be probably around here. You hear what I'm saying? Um, so that's that. You could also set it to just zero. So anytime it, it, it reaches zero, the bot starts buying, you know, when it reaches zero. Um, so that's low BB. I'm not sure, you know, what's better, Bollinger Band, like low BB or, or EMA. I'm not sure. So the other big thing about this program, this is uh, how you make money, basically. So remember I told you... Um, Whenever this second EMA line goes uh, minus 1% from the, the first uh, longer trend EMA line, it, the bot doesn't automatically buy it. The bot just triggers a buy. It, it triggers like, oh, these are the conditions where I would buy it. But then the thing is there's a second condition that has to be fulfilled. The bot will keep looking. Like, let's say it reaches uh, this point right here. Where, where my cursor is, is or let's just say this one right here, just to, to make it clear. Let's say this, uh, the price is like right here, and that fulfills our condition, minus 1%, right? The bot won't buy it right away. It'll wait to see until that trend is broken. So like, let's say the price goes down to here, the bot will keep monitoring if the price keeps going down and down and down, so let's say uh, it's at minus 5% and you have it at, at 1%. So let's say uh, you have a coin. It goes down 5%. That would trigger a good uh, time to buy, right? And remember, this minus 5% is just for the EMA difference. This isn't for, like, price difference. Like, the coin in price goes down 5%. Or a uh, coin in, like, Satoshi value goes down 5%. This is just in, uh, the EMA difference. So if... if uh, so if the coin goes down 5%, but it's still in the downtrend, let's say it's it's at minus 5%, and then it goes back to 4.5%, like being down 4.5%, it goes up a little bit. The trailing buy hasn't been triggered yet. Because uh, it could go back to 4.5%, but then from 4.5%, it could go down to like 7%, being down 7%. So, um, but then let's say it's at 7%, and it starts going back up to 5%, the trailing buy will be triggered, because the 1% uh, difference was, was you know, enacted, you know what I mean? Uh, it got triggered, the trailing buy trigger. So it got triggered at 6%. So the bot would buy whatever is for sale at 6%. So like at, once this this trigger gets uh, done, it gets triggered or whatever, uh, the bot will look at the next lowest, uh, you know, sell order, like wh whoever's selling for the lowest price and, and buy that up, as long as it's still above 5%. So like let's say the sell order book only has sell orders at 4%. Now that your the the actual last sale was at six percent, the bot still won't buy it. the The lowest sell order book, like sell order, has uh, has to be still above this, even after the trailing um, the the trail the buy trail uh, was triggered. It, it's a little confusing. They they have a good uh, explanation on their wiki about it. So uh, I would definitely like look at their wiki to see what how trailing works because it, it is a little confusing at work, uh, at first if you're not familiar with it. So that that's um, that's when it buys. Basically, I have a set to EMA difference uh, when the EMA goes down minus one percent and it buys you know with the trailing buy of 0.15 of one percent. 
so the sell strategy now. Uh, I know the buy strategy there was confusing. I don't think I explained it too well. Anyways, the the sell strategy is that it gains uh, every and so let's say you buy a coin, you bought it for uh, whatever five bucks, and it gains one point two five percent. That's what like five cents or whatever, a little more than five cents. Uh, the gain uh, works the, the same way with the the trailing profit. So like let's say it goes up to two percent, it won't like it. They won't sell it at 1.25%. It'll only sell it once the coin starts going back down from 2%. So once it goes, like, let's say it goes up to 1.25%, and then it goes back down to 1.10%, uh, or, like, let's say, rather, 1.11%, uh, and then it keeps going back up, the the sell won't be triggered yet. Um, it'll only be triggered if, like, let's say it's at 2%, or and then it goes back down to 185 and there's a, uh, someone wants to buy it above the price they have specified here, then it'll sell it to that person. Uh, so a little confusing. Um, it's 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 hard to to explain it without you seeing it in an action. Uh, here we have uh, dollar cost averaging enabled. You could disable it or enable it. Dollar cost averaging. I'll explain in a bit. Uh, rebuy timeout. This is the amount of time I think in seconds um, that, like, after you buy something, you you're you're not allowed to buy it again, even though it might be like triggering your buy. Um, these stop losses, I I don't have a uh, trigger for them. You can set uh, panic sell to to true if you want to just like sell everything immediately for market value which is uh, like maybe if the world is ending you would do that sell only mode like if everything is if the whole market is tanking you could do sell only mode um and not buy anything because you might just be fall buying falling knives or whatever and get stuck with some heavy bags um this BTC price drop trigger, this is cool. If if BTC uh, drops 6% in 24 hours, I it, the the freaking bot goes into sell-only mode. And then once it recovers 4%, then it stops being sell-only mode. Um, I just put this trigger in. I haven't really, like... Uh, had to like use this trigger yet it hasn't there has been a big drop in the past couple of days so i haven't really seen what what it could do uh, here are these i have like the this use this setting to ban uh the bot from trading in certain coins um since i have a white list of coins up here i don't need to really have this black list here but i just put it there just to be safe i don't want to get fucked you know um anyways so that's the the hefty pairs thing there's a few different strategies uh anyways uh with like buying and, and selling uh these aren't even the three there's there's a few more on the wiki let's go um see what what other options there are the wiki is really good it's not that long either so i recommend everyone uh read it Here's a trailing story that explains uh, trailing nice and short. You'll explain it pretty well. Uh, you'll understand it pretty well after reading it there. Uh, but here, let's do uh, buy and sell strategies. So they have um, you buy, do high BBB. You do a loss. So like if a coin gets like 1% loss, you'll buy it or 5% or 10% loss, whatever. EMA gain. Um, SMA gain, EMA spread, SMA spread, SMA cross, once the cross, uh, the SMA lines cross, EMA cross. Uh, see, I don't know what the best strategy is. There's only two selling strategies, high BB and gain. Uh, I don't know what the best strategies are, so I just use other people's strategies and settings. Um, let's see what dollar cost averaging. So dollar cost averaging is uh, pretty much bread and butter. This is how you prevent losing money. So if, it's a funny thing because like 
in order to prevent losing money, you basically double down and spend way more money. <laughs> That's how, how this program uh, does it with dollar cost averaging. So like, let's say you bought a coin, you have it set to sell at like a 1% profit, right? But you bought it when it's going down, obviously. So it's like uh, it might go down more than where you bought it. So let's say you bought it at minus 1% or whatever. You It costs you like 100 bucks. Or whatever but it went down to like 95 so now in order to make 1.25 percent it's got to go back to 101.25 but it might not go back to 101.25 in a while it might be stuck at like 95 bucks for uh you know for a week or two or whatever so what you could do is you could do dollar cost averaging so like let's say you bought five coins at 100 bucks right so that's 500 so what would happen is um, you could do dollar cost averaging. So you could set triggers. So like if it goes down another 2% after you bought it. So let's say it goes down to like 95 bucks, uh, whatever. Let's just say that is the 2%, even though that is like 5%. What it'll do is uh, you bought five coins at 100. This time it'll buy 10 coins at 95 or whatever, or whatever is... Uh, the double you it will double whatever the amount is so it'll buy another five hundred dollars worth at, at ninety five dollars so now you have a thousand dollars worth but your average price is no longer a hundred bucks now it's like uh it's closer to like ninety seven bucks or, or something like that so now it won't take you as long now now in order to like break even you have to sell it back at like 97 bucks instead of 100 bucks and if you want to sell it at a one percent profit or whatever you only have to sell it at like 98 bucks instead of 101 so it's a lot easier to get out of that bad position that you have uh with dollar cost averaging and let's say it keeps going down further to like 90 bucks um you set off another trigger I have my next trigger at 4%. But let's just say the next trigger you have set up, it's at $90. Uh, now it'll buy, now you have $1,000 worth of this coin. It'll buy another $1,000 worth of the coin. So now you have 2000 But the, the average will go down to, to something like uh, 93 bucks or something. So you see, like, the dollar cost averaging will bring the the value back down for like the the amount that you need to sell it to, in order to break even or, or break a profit so it, it's a easy way so it's like you now it's at 90 bucks you don't have to wait for it to go back to 101 in order to make your money back you know what i'm saying um it's a lot easier to get out of that bad position because i mean think about it for it to go from 90 to 93 is a lot easier than for it to go from 90 to 100 and you might so the, but the bad thing about this is that it could eat up a lot of your um, capital. So, like, remember the max amount you could buy is uh, 0.12. That's what I had it set up. So, you bought that, but then it triggers the, the first trigger. So, it doubles down. So, now you have 0 0.024 uh, of that coin. That, but then uh, it go, keeps going down. Now you have uh, 0.48. And then it still keeps going down. So now you have uh, 0.96 worth, BTC worth of that coin. That's almost 1% uh, of the Bitcoin. That's about... Um, I only started off with 0 0.05 Bitcoins in my Binance account just to get my feet wet. That's like 400 bucks or something. Um, so you see now that would be like 100 bucks. That would be like 25% of my portfolio right there. Just from dollar cost averaging, and if you do that like across like three or four coins, that's your whole balance. You can't, you can't really, you don't have anything to play around with anymore. So that's why you keep the cost the so close to the minimum. Because if you once you start doing dollar cost averaging, you could get screwed uh, in terms of like it eating up your balance and whatnot. So uh, that's that. Uh, trailing buy similar to to buy in in pairs um this will like let's say it goes down two percent won't buy at two percent it'll have to buy you know it'll have to go down to 2.2 percent and then it, it, it might consider putting a buy order in you know what i mean if there's a someone selling it at minus two percent uh similar to to how what we went over in in pairs the gain here is a little lower so like actually let me lower this too so like 
if your dollar cost average the coin it, you only need to sell make you know uh, less than one percent profit in order to get out of there this is uh, pretty big too you can set a max cost so like you only spend like um, you know only like uh, this much BTC uh, you'll devote to dollar cost averaging a coin or you could have it dollar cost average only four levels um, or you could have it dollar cost average only three levels um, that'll prevent you from spending too much on your of your balance on, on stuff this is the buy spread same thing as in the pairs log with the buy spread I'm not too sure what that does too too more too well um, so that's that then you also have the indicators file uh, this is where you um, define how much you know your BBB SMA or EMA periods are so depending on which strategy you're using you're only concerned with those settings so for EMA these are you know what I'm doing the first EMA line is 34 candles long the second is seven candles long I'm not sure what the EMA cross uh, does I think that's only if you're using the EMA cross um, um, what do you call it strategy 300 is how many seconds uh, your candles are so the 300 is uh, a five minute candle period um, you could set it to 15 minute an hour you know two hours six hours 12 hours one day um uh, lengths but if you send it if you um make it long like that you might be waiting a few days in order to get a buy or whatever so there you go you, the little window pops up when you run it it opens up this browser window you can see what's going on so here um you see what's going on you can see uh since i have it on ema gain you can see uh and i have the white list of coins that i i could possibly trade you can see uh, what their current EMA value is. Remember, my trigger was at minus 1% almost. You can see what they're currently at, so you can monitor it in real time. Um, you can see the, the coins that I have bought previously. I bought this one, uh, the bot bought this one, um, and it's waiting for it to hit 1.25% gain uh, in order for it to sell. A dollar cost average this coin engine it had like a 12 or 14 percent increase yesterday so that's the one thing that like not sure about how to like uh, prevent like it had a little it had a big jump yesterday and you know obviously it has to come down after that so what the what happened was the bot bought it on its way down and now it it still kept going down and now it's stuck with this freaking bag uh engine coin i think it, it bought four of it initially and then it went you see this one level dollar cost average it bought a double bag after that or maybe or it must have bought six initially and then it, it bought a another six afterwards uh so the average price went down a little bit and it's waiting uh for it to hit 85 of one percent in order so these are all the sales uh, it made. So, anyways, so the bot is running right now. Uh, you can tell it's running because it has the normal heartbeats and stuff every 10 minutes. Uh, you can see the different percentages and stuff. Uh, you change the settings. All the settings I showed you could be um, changed here. So that's that. Um, in terms of what settings are good, I have no idea. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've never done this stuff, never traded uh, with EMA, SMA, or Bollinger Bands. I'm just using someone else's settings and I'm running it. But so far I'm pretty happy with it. And I got like uh, some positive percentages here. Things are nice, you know what I mean? Keep in mind, it says here I made 1.39%, but this isn't 1.39% of my entire balance because I didn't spend my entire balance to, to make these sales. I only spent... Uh, about maybe 10% of my balance. So I made 1% on 10% of my balance. So uh, it's not too much uh, profit currently. But once I start building up my dollar cost average bags and, and stuff like that. Uh, it should be making some more profit down the line. Um, anyways, uh, I'm, too, I'm a bit conservative with the settings right now. Just because I don't want to lose money and get stuck with uh, some bags. 
but basically that's what the bot can do. The cool thing about the bot, and this is pretty critical, is um, like if you know anything about trading, um, this is from like the little research I've been I've done this week. Excuse me. Um, EMA, like using just one indi indicator like EMA, is basically just guessing because you're. EMA just looks at the previous candles, and the previous candles don't freaking, you know, say anything about what the future candles will do, because it's just, uh, future candles are based on market sentiment, you know, if people want to buy it or people don't want to buy it. Uh, but, so just using one indicator isn't that good, but the good thing, what's today, April 8th, when I'm recording this video, on April 16th, they're gonna. They're supposed to release version two of the software. And version two of the software, they'll you'll be able to use multiple indicators together, which is cool. And they'll also have other like fancier indicators like RSI, which uh, indicates if a stock, if a coin is undersold or overbought or oversold. And if you use RSI with another indicator like EMA, you could really like find like better values, like more. Um, what you call it, like more legit values, let's just say, like uh, values that are, are better buys than, than just using EMA, because EMA is or, sort of like flipping a coin, like it's going down now, will it go down further, will it go down, will it go up after this, who knows, you know what I mean, but you just know that it is going down at the moment. Um, obviously you don't want to be buying it when it's going up, I mean, you could also set it, like I have it set up so, um, let's see. I have it set up so, like, when it's going down, uh, I buy it, and then I sell it. But you don't have it set up, you can make this a positive number. So, when it's going up, you could buy it and then sell it, you know, a little after that. Because you think uh, the trend will continue, you know what I mean? There's all different types of strategies you could use. Uh, so anyway, so version two will have MACD, will have different indicators like MACD, uh, RSI, stuff like that, and you can use multiple indicators at the same time. And the important thing is that if you like the program and what it does now, and you, and you really want to, but you really would prefer to have multiple indicators at the same time and have RSI and MACD, uh, the thing is... When version 2 comes out, this program will become subscription model only. So right now, you just pay $200, you get the program, you get the license for life. And you'll get version 2 automatically with no upgrade fee or anything, upgrade cost. You won't have to pay a subscription cost. But if you wait until April 16th and you try to get into version 2, you'll have to pay, like, I think they have 35 euros a month you'll have to pay just to use the program. And uh, pro version will be like 50 euros a month. So I think you get pro version included uh, with this. Uh, so it's it's if you like the program, it's better to buy it now. And then you get the license for life, basically. Um, that's definitely like, don't don't sleep on buying the program. You, you want to buy it like in within the next week, um, possibly sooner. Not to be pushy or anything. I'm not trying to do that, but like... I definitely like the program so far. If I knew how to buy and sell better in uh, in, in markets like this, it, I would could you know use it better. But um, I would definitely, if you want to try it out, definitely buy it before in, in the next week. Anyways, uh, if you have any questions, just hit me up. I'm always free to to answer it. Uh, and uh, yeah, anyways, uh, take it easy.